mentioned England. Um, what did you think of England's fa- failure? Another <clears throat> England failure at a major tournament mm. in some people's eyes. Um, and do you think Roy Hodgson is the best man for the England job at the moment? I can see why they chose Roy, or Uncle Roy as I call him, because he shares my surname. <laughs> yeah. and I, I've been perpetuating this myth that he's my uncle, yeah. and a few people have fallen for it. But now the cat's out of the bag, so it's... <laughs> but yeah, I've strung a few people along with that one. Um, I, th- I can see why they chose Roy, and uh, I think he's, he's probably the best placed person at the moment to stabilise things, reunite the squad. He's, not, he's never going to be a long-term solution. Um, when I say long term, I mean, you know, sort of in the next five or ten years, we probably want to be heading in a slightly different direction. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's done a good job considering. Yeah. But ultimately, I am disappointed in England and their performance. And I sort of, I have a bit of a theory on, on this whole sort of ball retention thing. And yeah. it's more to do with the physicality of the game than the actual ball retention side of the game. I know that the argument is you can't concede a goal if you've got the ball, yeah. but also you're not wearing yourself out. And what I really, the, the one thing I noticed from that Italy game when I was watching it was just how tired England players got very quickly. Mm. And it was a combination of chasing the ball, mm-hmm. but when they got the ball, there was so, it was so rare that yeah. they shot up the pitch. Yeah. You can't spend 90 minutes chasing a football and when you get it, suddenly sprinting. Sure. And they looked so exhausted by these, this, this continual physical exertion that was mm. taking place without the ball and with the ball. Mm. And I think that that was, that was one of the main problems. That, that they, it was a sort of self-exacerbating situation mm. that got worse and worse and worse as the game went on. Um, so we've got to learn to keep the ball, yeah. not just for sort of footballing reasons, but sort of for, you know, in tournament play, you can't be doing these, these, these sure. bursts. And it was almost like, even in the pub I was watching it in, the reaction of everyone there is like, suddenly a big scream comes up as soon as we get the ball. Mm. And football's not like that, you know, hold the ball. Yeah. We don't need to get excited, you know, we don't need to bomb up the pitch, <laughs> you know. And I think that's sort of, uh, quite a lot of the mentality is like that, basically, with English football, isn't it? Um, when England play, anyway. Mm. So, um, that's one thing that's got to change. But, I mean, if you're asking me what else has got to change, there's, 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 there's a million things that aren't there. And, and I think that, you know, the attitude to the game has got to change. The coaching's got to change. I, I'd be interested to see what, what um, ideals we can adopt from other countries, such as Netherlands, mm. Spain, and Germany. Um, but I, 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 for me, the biggest problem, I lived in Spain a few years ago, and um, I, I spent a lot of time in Italy as well. And I used to, when I was living in Spain, I really got into playing football out there, and I had sort of fallen off playing in England. Mm-hmm. And it was because of the facilities. Mm. And me and my mates could go down to pristine pitches that were municipal, public access, mm. And they had great training, uh, great changing facilities, yeah. really well kept goals and nets. And it was like a luxury. Mm. You know, you'd pay a lot of money to play on that sort of pitch in this country. Mm. And they were everywhere around. Yeah. Oh, I was living in Barcelona. They were everywhere around there. The, similarly, uh, they're in Italy. You know, mm. you can go and find a great pitch. And also their attitude. I, I watched a kind of um, Sunday league team play. Mm. And they were really, they were nothing. They were just a bunch of mates but they did enormous drills before the game and they were professional and they had a local representative from the bank that would put a bit of money into them. You know what I mean? And just the whole sort of outlook is so different out there and the facilities are very different. And I did come away from those, well, the last one was in Italy and I came away from that just thinking, I mean, we are are so far away from that. Mm. It's no wonder, you know? I mean, because at amateur, I play amateur league level um, for Ivis FC and <clears throat> a lot of the grounds that we that we go around to are not brilliant. Um, our home ground has got divots and craters all all over it, and we're in the amateur leagues. Yeah. And um, there are certain there are certain grounds that are absolutely brilliant. HSBC being one of them. I've always heard the stories about Bank of England as well, but obviously they're bank owned mm. pitches, so mm. they're kind of nice and pristine. But it, it's it's interesting you say that these municipal places have really really good pitches. Amazing. I always remember like jumpers for goalposts, yeah. crappy crappy pitch, crappy pitch up the road, yeah. and but we just wanted to play. But football. you just wanted to play football. Mm. Yeah, I mean, they 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 were government funded in one way or another. But I also think that the clubs have a responsibility to put money in mm. into these 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 um, these schemes if they're going to start in this country. 
And also, the, the biggest problem, again, comes back to the Premier League mm-hmm. and the FA, yeah. whereas the Premier League have a slice of pie this big, mm. and the FA have a slice of pie that big, mm. and there's just not enough to go around from that small slice of pie, whereas in other federations, it's mixed. You know, the league is run by the federation, mm. so they, they can split that huge sponsorship money that they get in the TV deal. That's not to say the Premier League don't put money, because I, I believe they put in something like 40, 45 million a year, and the FA put in about 12, I think. So, you know, comparatively, yeah. but then, you know, 45 million of whatever it is. Of that like, three, billion, three, three, three billion, three billion, yeah, for the new TV deals, yeah. Um, but it'd be nice to see part of that deal go through the clubs and part of that as a percentage have to go to local. Because mm. at the end of the day, if these local um, facilities are producing better players, mm. then those clubs will benefit as well. That's very true.